Hello, everyone. Sage here for another excellent edition of Expert Talks for Calkine Media. And for the Executive Corner today, we have Empire Resources with us, who are a gold and copper focused explorer and developer with a highly prospective project portfolio with excellent potential. And so for the most up-to-date information on the company, I've organised to sit down with Managing Director Sean Richardson. So, Sean, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Sage. Thanks for having me. Yes. Well, congratulations. I guess we should begin there on the latest results from the Downhole Geophysical Survey at the Ewan Mary Project. Can you throw some light on these results and explain the significance for ERL to our audience? Yeah, thanks, Sage. Yeah, so we're really, um, really encouraged by what we're seeing at Ewan Mary. Um, we finished a diamond program in the first quarter of this calendar year that uh, hit some really interesting sulfides, massive sulfides, really thick intercepts. And uh, we followed that up pretty quickly with some more downhole geophysics, um, downhole electromagnetic. And uh, that's um, helped to uh, really define that really big conductor that uh, Smithsweld um, has a very prominent conductor there and the, and the downhole EM has helped us uh, define that even better. And it's really set us up for this round of drilling that we've started uh, this quarter. And uh, we've been targeting that conductor and, and some of the uh, geology that uh, we, we like to look at. And um, it's really been very encouraging. The results are really, really good. And um, we really look forward to seeing what this program brings for us. Fantastic. Sounds like a really advanced stage exploratory project there. Um, thank you for sharing those fantastic results. And besides this, consistently encouraging drilling results and other discoveries across the Ewan Mary project have highlighted the exceptional prospectivity of the Ewan Mary project. So how confident are you about the potential of Ewan Mary that it could host further economic multi-element mineral deposits? Yes, well, we're, we're very confident. Um, there's an existing um, 2,000, uh, two and a half million tonne jaw compliant resource uh, at a prospect or a project called um, uh, Justice Search, which is inside the system. It's, it's certainly mineralised. There's certainly a lot of metal in the system. Um, and we've really targeted in the last three years trying to grow that uh, mineral, mineral prospectivity in the area uh, and trying to build a base load of, of resources. So with just desert sitting there at two and a half million tonne, knowing that it's a, a, a economic um, deposit and uh, knowing that we do have other areas such as A zone, which is really a really strong target just to the north of just desserts. We've really spent a fair, fair bit of time going around the, uh, the structure, the, uh, the synclinal fold that we have and um, targeting other areas. So YTO1 is an area that we're keen to get into um, in this drill program and, and put some deeper core into that and just really get understand the geology there. And then of course the Smith's well that we, we touched on earlier, that's the uh, really strong conductor that we've seen and we've seen some really good numbers come back from that, really encouraging information. And then for, further up the, uh, the trend, there's Constantine, which is um, really infant for us. We, we need to do a lot of work there to try and understand it. So a lot of prospectivity. There's still a lot of smoke in the area that hasn't even been touched with a draw rig. And uh, we've, um, we've been um, really trying to work our way through it systematically to, to determine and really build on that resource base that we have at Justice Earths. Well, sounds all very exciting. You're in a beautiful part of the world there in Western Australia with the rich minerals, red sand. So sounds like it must keep you busy. Um, recently, ERL set the boots on the ground at the Nanandi project and encountered extensive copper nickel soil anomalisms. How significant are these results and what's the plan for the project moving forward, please? Well, none of these, yeah, that's another excellent little package that we picked up last year. Um, wasted no time getting on the ground there. We, we did a, uh, a 1500 or just north of 1500 point soil orientation survey. Um, and we've had the geology crew out there doing the mapping. We've had some geophysical reviews and we're trying, really trying to understand the target potential for, for Nanity. It's in the Burundi Greenstone zone and, and um, along strike, we've got up and down strike of the uh, Cyprium's um, Nanity well, um, thir circa 30 million tonne copper resource there. So we see there's a lot of potential in the area. Um, we like the ground that we've got 
and uh, we've we've spent a fair bit of time and effort late last year, really just getting some sighters on that, building our targets up so that we can get in there this year with the drill rig and um, start hitting some of those, uh, those really interesting targets and entities. So for us, it's a really greenfields project. Um, no drilling to speak of. There's been a little bit of rab in the in the earlier days of of exploration, but uh, no RC, no real work on that area. So for us, it's a great opportunity. Um, really early stages, and um, you know, lots of lots of potential in that area. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So it's it's been great to see so many advances in technology actually um, impacting your sector in regards to now a lot of artificial intelligence being used in regards to maybe surveying and finding, um, you know, areas where you can maybe dig a bit deeper or drill a bit deeper. Did you have any insights to share on that? Is the site that you're working on incorporating that sort of technology? Well, we, we incorporate the, all the technology that we, we can into our systems and our, our, our procedures and, and the way that we go about ranking our projects and, and working those up. There's no doubt that, uh, you know, going forward, we're going to be having to un uncover deposits that uh, are deeper, mm -hmm. harder to um, find. Um, and, you know, gone are the days where you can just walk out and do ground geophysics and expect to find the next big deposit. So there's a lot of technology that goes into our work these days and uh, that'll only improve and grow as technology grows. Um, and, and in the industry, we're seeing a lot of technology improvements and a lot of the technology advancements to help us with our targeting and also our ability to drill deep. And uh, But at the end of the day, um, you have to drill. You know, there's only way you can find a deposit is to drill holes. So um, we, we focus... 90% of our efforts on the drill rig and then um, and then the rest of the work is uh, bringing in the, the boffins, uh, the technical expertise and the, uh, the technology. Thank you so much, Sean. So ERL sold its investment in DCN and has not made any similar investments since then. Are you on the lookout for similar or different investment alternatives? Well, we do, Sage, yeah. We, we're, I mean, we're investors in our own right as well and, and we like our industry and we invest heavily in our industry um, in, our own, in our own right personally and, and privately. So we, we do have a, our group does have a very strong investment focus um, and if that opportunity comes along with uh, what we saw with NTM again, we would take that opportunity definitely. Um, and I think we've proven that we, we can execute an investment strategy and investment plan well. Um, so look, we're, we, we wait to see what, what the market brings. Um, and if there's opportunity out there, we'll take it. Um, at the moment, our focus really has gone towards exploration of, of you and Mary Nanity, Penny's Find and our other projects. So we're an exploration company, but we do have the ability to be able to, uh, to invest. And, and it's in, in Empire's uh, history uh, with NTM and Dacian, um, FYI, and a few others along the way where we've done pretty well. And, uh, you know, if the opportunity comes along, definitely we'll, we'll take it. Great. Thank you for sharing that with us. So how suitably is ERL positioned at funding Front to Finance its upcoming exploration works and ultimately meet its corporate objectives? Yeah, so as you look, finances are a very strong focus for us. We... We need to be very cognizant of, of where we're at, um, what we're spending, what we're spending on, and making sure that the dollars we do spend are as, as efficient and, and uh, um, as directed as we can into, into the ground. So um, we keep our uh, overheads very low. Uh, we, we run a very uh, tight team and we don't, um, we don't have big uh, expectations on, uh, on, on the corporate side of things. So we can put as much in the ground as we can. And, and look, we've got enough money to execute the, the programs for this year quite comfortably. Um, and, uh, and then we'll, um, we'll look into the next year to see where we're at. But uh, at the moment, we're very comfortable. We've got probably a bit over $2 million in the bank and, um, and, and very happy with where we are financially. And uh, we, um, we don't have any, any massive um, overheads, as I said, and we don't have any um, outstanding creditors other than the 14-day terms that we carry with our normal suppliers. Thank you, Sean. Um, if you don't mind me asking, I believe some of the labs may have had delays because of the COVID lockdowns. Was Empire affected by any of those delays? And if you were, have they been resolved? Yes, Sage, definitely. I mean, we're hearing about it. It's um, been a very tough market. Um, in the last six months for us uh, in turning 
assays around, not only the assays, but in getting access to drill rigs and, and getting work done on the ground. Yeah. And predominantly that's been because of the lack of labour. Um, you know, we've got a very, very high demand at the moment in the industry. And uh, we, with, this, with the COVID lockdowns over here, we couldn't get crews in to, to do the work. Um, some of the drill crews went home for Christmas and couldn't get back in. So yeah. that affected us pretty significantly. It's affecting the labs, um, you know, demands up. So people are, you know, jumping around a fair bit to chase the buck. And uh, what we're seeing is that uh, um, what we're seeing now is that as the borders have, have um, been removed, the border restrictions have been removed, we're seeing the flow of workers back in. We're starting to see a lot of the guys coming from Europe, the geos coming from Europe, have been stuck in at home for the last two years, pretty keen to get out in the bush. So we're starting to see a lot of those guys come in now. So we expect, while we have been impacted by it and it hasn't been pleasant, um, we haven't stopped the work that we've, we've been doing and we've managed to work around those issues knowing that they are very short term. So now that we're in a situation where we can have the, um, the labour force coming back in, we'll start, should start to see assay turnarounds improve. Um, you know, drill rigs starting to improve, we'll start to see labour market, field assistance, jobs just coming back into the market. And uh, we should hopefully start to see, um, while there's still a lot of demand, we should start to see the, uh, the turnaround times on some of these projects and, and, and work programs improve. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for summarising that for us. So, well, the gold market cap is close to $12 trillion. There's a lot of demand for gold out there. And gold prices have been firm due to the recent uncertainties in the global environment, people seeking the safe havens. Um, as a result of these developments, how do you see these things panning out for ERL in the near term as well as the long term, please? Well, you know, metals markets have been really obviously very strong in the last uh, you know, six to 18 months, I suppose, when you look at the various different commodities. Um, at the moment, um, I think gold's tracking, I haven't checked it in the last day or so, but gold's probably tracking 2700 Aussie, certainly uh, north of 1800 US. Um, you know, copper, which is a big focus for us, was, has been uh, sitting at $10,000 US a tonne. Um, it's slipped a bit below that recently. But um, look, it's the whole market's really really the appetite is, is, is huge. And uh, it's not just gold and uh, financial markets, it's the, uh, it's the, the net zero or the, um, the, the zero carbon economy that's driving a lot of the metal demands in the, in the system. And um, we don't see any let up there. That's the, the targets, if, if you um, put them into your, into your forecasting, it, it's just unbelievable. The amount of metal required to make that transition to a zero carbon economy is, is, uh, is orders of magnitude greater than it is now. And uh, we're seeing a pretty, pretty significant shift there at the moment. We're seeing a lot of technology, a lot of changes in the way that we do things. Um, and a lot of those improvements, um, a lot of those uh, changes are uh, massive improvements to the bottom line of, of operating companies when they look at the, uh, the zero emission technologies over the hydrocarbon technologies, you do, you do see a lot of you know, advantages in going down that path. So. We expect to see you know, uh, copper and, and um, all the, the battery metal or the electric metal um, um, thematics to improve. And uh, of course, gold is, there's no fever like gold fever. It's, um, it's a great commodity to be in. And uh, you know, we, we don't see any let up there either. So going forward, um, you know, there will have obviously changes in the cyclical markets and, and, and going forward, but um, we see a very strong future for decades um, within the metals market, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah, it's great to see that it's probably because of these um, metals stock and the energy stocks on the ASX that it sort of keeps the Australian economy buoyant um, in relation or relative to the other economies that are kind of uh, being affected by inflation and other macroeconomic factors. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights today, Sean. But we're reaching the end of the discussion. And lastly, we'd like to wrap up by sharing ERL's vision about the development of its project portfolio and the company's overall development plans for the medium to long term horizon, please. Yeah, certainly. Um, so as I alerted to earlier, you know, and, and as you identified our, our flagship projects, the Mary, it's a copper gold project. Um, two commodities that are very, um, we, we like a lot of. Copper is a great commodity to be in. Um, you can't have a transition to zero carbon economy without a massive amount of copper. And uh, gold is just gold. It's a great product. It's, um, you don't have to explain what gold does to anyone. It's an easy, easy sell and it's easy to, uh, 
easy to understand, um, can be difficult to find, definitely, but um, we think we're up to that task. But with you and Mary, uh, as I said earlier, two and a half million tonne resource sitting there um, and want for, a, um, want for a processing option within trucking distance wouldn't be there anymore. So mm -hmm. we see a lot of potential in the area if we can um, continue to uncover opportunities um, at you and Mary and, and further afield, then uh, we, we expect we can, we can grow our business back into production. Um, but we've got to get that exploration discovery. We need to be um, building our exploration functions along the way, um, which we've been doing. And uh, our, our objective is to grow the business um, in that organic fashion. Um, at the moment, copper is great. We like the story. We like, uh, we like you and Mary, um, two and a half million tonne resource. Um, need to find more, definitely. And, uh, and, and we're looking at all our prospectivity and uh, prospectivity of the area to see what we can do. And, and that's the um, short to medium term objective is to really build on our resource base at Ewer Mary and a broader objective in the long term to, uh, to really grow the business. And um, if we uh, do some corporate work there, that'd be great as well. So yeah, look, it's exciting. Um, and Empire is just an infant at the moment, underpriced, of course, um, aren't we all? And, uh, and, and we're looking to um, really add some value um, with with some really smart exploration, some really smart corporate work, and uh, and build on the story that uh, we've been working on for the last three years. Thank you so much, Sean. Sounds like a, a great strategy, winning combination there, and best of luck with your diversification and growth in in the future. Thanks, Ange. And thank you so much for joining us. That was a very informative discussion with Sean Richardson. He's a Managing Director of Empire Resources. And if you missed any part of that chat, you can catch the full interview on our YouTube channel, Calcine Media. So please make sure you subscribe. This is Sage reminding you to stay apprised and invest wise with Calcine Media.